Let us introduce you to your son, Wendell. Uh, Wendell, come on out. Time. Yes, it has. 46 years. <laughs> 46 years. 46 years I've been yeah. looking for you. Oh, thank you so much, Troy. Dr. Phil, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. Well, well, good to meet you. You two have a seat. Oh. You two have a seat here. Now, it's, uh, so, so, Wendell, it, it's, it's so good to have you here. Tell me what's going through your, your mind and your heart right now as you meet um, your biological father for the first time? Well, first of all, it's glad to know that somebody was looking for me. Um, I, I want you to know that I have no feelings of resentment or uh, sense of abandonment or anything like that. On the contrary, I want to actually thank you for, the, for making the decision that you did, whether it was your decision or not, but the parents that I got were two of the most wonderful people on the planet and I, I couldn't have asked for any better parents to raise me. But I guess if there's a question that I have, it'd be, you know, how did it all go down? Were you involved in the process, or? I was not involved in the process. Um, your mother came from a wealthy family. We were relatively uh, poor. When she became pregnant, it became obvious that her mother kept her under wraps, sent her to a home of unwed mothers. Wouldn't let her walk and t except at midnight in the, d in the neighborhood because she didn't want the neighbors to find out that she had been pregnant. So my father immediately said, You're gonna, this is what you do. This is your right. He threw my scholarships away and said, you began work the day you graduated from high school at Roar Aircraft. And I started working and I gave up everything because I just, my father stated, he said, there's no such thing as illegitimate children, just illegitimate parents. And it stuck with me my whole life. And then the birth came, and I was told um, that I would not be allowed at the hospital. Uh, I was told my name was going to be on a birth certificate, but that wasn't obviously the case. And then they told us, um, my parents, that they were giving the child up. And my mother had fought to take custody. This is her first, you know, her son, her grandson, her first grandson. And she wanted that child. She wanted you. And they just, they had more money, they had more power, and they just did it. And I was sick, and I didn't know what to do, and I was lost. So I called the local uh, school, uh, junior college, and asked, I need to do something, I'm going crazy. And I went to play football, and, and, but you never, ever left the back of my mind or in my heart. 